All right. I see that people are slowly joining, but I think everybody who was in the waiting room is already here. So let's not waste our precious time and start. Thank you very much for joining our session onboarding citizen science and the role of research libraries, barriers and accelerators. Uh, today, uh, the session is organized by the Shark Project, Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud. And thank you very much to Libra 2021 uh, that is hosting the session today. My name is Tanya Yankilevich and I'm the training coordinator at Libra and uh, work on the Shark Project uh, very intensely within the training uh, department. And I'm very happy to host the session today. Bear with me if I'm a little bit slow with transferring my slides. Sometimes there's te technical difficulties involved. Um, just before we start, I would like to set the tone for the session. Only the presentation parts of this workshop are being recorded. Uh, so you will have the access to those recordings later. Uh, we're doing this so that we can uh, reuse the content and let, allow you to watch it later on, but allow the discussion to be very open and free. So during the discussion, we will not be recording the session, so you can feel free to turn on your camera or not if you don't feel comfortable. It's up to you. Like I said, turn on your camera. We would love to see who, who is behind the name, but if you don't feel comfortable or you don't have the camera, that's also fine. We would love uh, to have you participate anyway. Mute yourself until you speak. So during the presentations, it would be great to eliminate the background noise. So mute yourself, but as soon as we start the discussion, please unmute yourself and let the ideas flow. And last but not least, maybe the most important one is please participate and enjoy today's session. I will have, uh, I would like to say a few words about the project that uh, within the framework of which this uh, uh, session is organized. Uh, Shocks Open Science and Humanities Open Cloud uh, is a quite a large project, 48 partners, that started in January 2019. It's one of the cluster projects uh, that is focused on creating and taking care of the social sciences and humanities part of the European Open Science uh, Cloud. Uh, there are several objectives, such as reusing through open science and fair principles, interconnecting existing and new infrastructures, establishing appropriate governance models for SSH EOS. With the, part, with the shock project, we're trying to aim at a very a large multitude of stakeholders among which, of course, libraries and researchers, research libraries and researchers are one of the main stakeholders. Um, the project is sponsored by Horizon 2020 European Union funding, and you can learn more about it uh, at www.sshopencloud.eu. There are a number of partners, like I said, 48 involved in the project, and if we had to categorize and what they're working on within the project is, as free landmarks and projects, stakeholder engagement and dissemination, research communities, and technology providers. Uh, quite a number of exploitable results have already been achieved by the project or are in the process of being achieved. Uh, it's been a while, we started in 2019, so we're now happy to present some of the achievements we've, uh, that can be used and reused. Uh, the, the results that we're presenting are either SSH or multidisciplinary, the SSH ones you can see here in yellow and multidisciplinary ones are in blue. The results, some examples are, for example, the Open, Dis uh, open uh, Training Discovery Toolkit, that is a curated registry of training resources, or a virtual collection registry, your tools and data playlist, or training directory currently being, uh, currently being filled with uh, a number of the registry of trainers that you could use or, uh, for your trainings in open science and citizen science and such. Uh, so a number of tools available for you uh, to, to use and reuse, all of them focusing on either data management, processing and analysis, training, or data sets. Uh, if we would like to, if you want to look at the distribution, domain distribution between the partners, the social sciences are covered by CESDA, European Social Survey, and SHARE, uh, whereas the humanities are covered by Dania EU, Claudin, and European um, research infrastructure for heritage science. That is it about the project. You can always learn more on our website, and I don't want to waste too much of our time on uh, the project results, although there are many very interesting ones. So I would encourage you to go to the website. But I would also like to spend a little bit of time introducing our wonderful speakers today. Uh, we have a number of them. Uh, uh, Thomas Karstedt and, and, and Catherine Overhart uh, represent the University uh, and University Library of Southern Denmark. Uh, as well as the Lieber Citizen Science Working Group. Tiberius Ignat, uh, Scientific Knowledge Services, 
uh, also represents our Libra Citizen Science Working Group uh, because this, this session is organized in coordination with the working group um, that, that is very actively working on uh, everything and anything citizen science and research libraries. Alessia Smanyoto represents the EHESS, uh, as well as uh, for, uh, another project she'll talk a little bit more about. Elena Schwarm uh, uh, is here on behalf of the ENOS project, in which Libra is also involved, which is focusing on citizen science integration into higher education, as well as University of Bordeaux. So she will share with us a few interesting ideas about innovation in citizen science. Angele Justamente Rodriguez uh, represents, and I apologize uh, in advance if I'm butchering some of the names. Uh, I'm sure the speakers will correct me later on. Uh, uh, Angela is here representing Post for Cloud project. My name is Tanya Nkilevich and I represent Lieber and Shock, as I already said, I will be the host for today, uh, supported by Marik Williams from Trust AT, who also is an integral part of the Shock project and will be your moderator for the discussion session. Now, without further ado, I'd like to quickly give you uh, a shout out to the agenda so we all know what's going on. We have short presentations uh, for the first uh, 15, uh, for the first 45 minutes. Uh, mine is not necessarily as much of a presentation, but an introduction, followed by Alessia, uh, Thomas, uh, and Catherine, Tiberius, Elena, and Angela, uh, in that order. Uh, after those presentations, I hope we're all going to be very much inspired and uh, excited uh, about the discussion, a collaborative work on Google Jamboard. Marik will in, in introduce the Jamboard, so it's a very easy platform to use for co-creation or collaborative work, after which we would like to follow your level of onboarding uh, in citizen science. To the, today's, uh, the, the general idea behind today's session came up in November during the first session and that we organized November 2020 together with EOSC Shock uh, and uh, Freya. Uh, it was the realizing of EOSC and the session was focusing on uh, what citizen science is, uh, the role of libraries in citizen science, as well as the presentation of some use cases and projects of cit on citizen science. Now today's session in today's session, we would like to see start a discussion on how to advance SSH progress through participative research in, uh, uh, with the help of uh, research libraries by, uh, by identifying barriers and potential accelerators. Uh, we would also like to discuss synergies and collaborations um, between initiatives presented by the speakers, and I hope we can achieve that uh, uh, through uh, our wonderful presentations and find links between citizen science, shock, EOSC, and, and uh, many more. Thank you very much for your attention. And this was my very short uh, introduction. And without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Alessia for her uh, presentation. Alessia, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for the presentation. Here you have uh, my screen normally, and it is already full screen, right? Yes. Okay, so in this presentation, uh, it will be about uh, Coeso Project, an European project funded under the Horizon 2020 SWAF Science Sweden for Society project program. And uh, I will highlight how we envision to enabling more citizen science activities within the social sciences and the humanities. If I am able to change the slide. Okay, COESO uh, aim to contribute overcoming the obstacles that hinder the development of citizen science, facilitating and support participatory research through a service, service um, first approach. 10 citizen science pilots will represent a variety of disciplines, societal challenges and types of engagement. COESO will also develop a virtual ecosystem for research activation that we have called VERA, and we collaborate with research funding organization to enhance financial support to citizen science. So VERA will be a common platform for co-creating new knowledge and solution and to deliver them to society. We have called it a collaboratory, a space uh, fitted for collaboration. We have um, 15 partners and three third parties from six countries, so France, Portugal, Italy, France, Belgium, and Germany. And uh, we have uh, six academic research centers and institutions, two public and one private foundation, three SME, five associations, and one NGO. And uh, through this uh, huge uh, partnership, we wish to um, 
to be sure that uh, all the uh, future users of the Vera ecosystem will be represented. So we will build uh, on an already uh, existing uh, platform. This is uh, hypothesis.org platform, and uh, we will build also on the experience that Open Edition has in building this uh, su such, uh, such a platform. Hypothesis.org is an international academic blogging platform dedicated to the social sciences and the humanities, and it is also a NEOSC uh, service. Unique for its size and scope, 4,000 blogs, uh, 7 million visits in 2020. Through hypothesis, uh, researchers communicate with their peers and with society openly, without delay and interactively on every part of their research project activities, fieldwork, data analysis, seminar and conferences and results. So it born as a France-based services in 2013. It started its internationalization uh, some years ago, and today around 40% of the produced content is in another language uh, than French, especially in English, German, and, and Spanish. So what do you mean uh, to build on hypothesis? Um, we uh, have already uh, some blogs dedicated to participatory research and citizen, sci and citizen science uh, um, in, uh, in the platform. And uh, it is used as a flexivity space. For example, it is the case here for the German blog uh, Burgenkuste Wissenschaft that uh, take over a conference on 2015 and gather resources uh, for citizen science in the SSH. But uh, hypothesis blogs are used also for dissemination and information related to participatory project. This is the case of uh, Les Urbaines, a project started in 2013 and was an action research project in a town near in Paris, Genvilliers, to understand the gendered uses of public space in the urban context. And uh, blog on hypothesis are used also for supporting uh, the ongoing research on the field where partners share results, analysis, and thoughts through, through the, the research process. It was the case of the Places project that gathered the researcher from the SSH and journalists. And it is the case of the CGIE participatory project that is about uh, digitizing, digitizing, so taking photos of the seals kept in regional archives and uh, the, the participant will analyze them and reach them with metadata and uh, add them to a national uh, database. Um, the experience of the platform uh, of the hypothesis.org uh, is also a model to envision how trainings for citizen science and participatory research activities can be built, built in collaboration with libraries. The development of the Spanish-speaking communities, for example, is built in collaboration with the UNAD Library in Madrid that carry out the accompaniment and training of the Spanish linguistic hypothesis community. Many of the French training for academic blogging with hypothesis are organized in collaboration with the Paris Library uh, Bulac. So with COESO, uh, we wish to overcome the lack of visibility and recognition of the SSH contribution to citizen science. And we wish also to overcome what hinder the development and funding of participatory research within the SSH disciplines. So uh, the 10 pilots that we will uh, run within COESO are 10 different ways for carrying out citizen science uh, activities in our disciplines. And here you have a quick overview. Uh, one pilot is um, gather history and social anthropology researchers with sustainable development associations, members, local inhabitants, and local authorities to understand mass tourism and urban transformation in Lisbon. Another one is uh, between philosophy and performance studies researchers with dancer and choreographers to understand how empowering people and tackling gender issues uh, through the joint practice of dance and philosophy. Two more pilots will implement a collaboration between social science researchers and journalists on the topic of organized crime. 
But the first one will be about how to elicit good governance practices through solution journalism narratives. And the second one will be about how to foster investigative reporting impact in tackling corruption, collusion, and inequality risks in civil society. The last one that is in build uh, is a will about, it will be a crowdsourcing activity on historical and written letters, gathering historians, lay citizens and practitioners from governmental sectors around the question of the migrant knowledge and with the aim to develop systemic collaboration for addressing contemporary migration issues. So each one of the pilots will have its own hypothesis or blog, allowing to shorten the scientific communication cycle and the impact of the research on society. And together, Within the cohesive framework, the pilots will explore new methodologies, transmedia practices for writing research, novel partnership, and mutual learning exercise. At the project level, uh, thanks to the pilots' observation, we will develop a set of analytics for assessing collaboration and work with funders to gather diversified framework to fund citizen science in our disciplines. So five more pilots will come through an open call that will open by the end of the year. So are we doing uh, citizen science? We understand citizen science as an umbrella term, gathering a diversity of research practices, as the European Citizen Science Association community stated in their list of characteristics early this year. But as we saw in the previous examples, we need to highlight that before the umbrella term of citizen science came under the spot, these practices were already there, also within the SSH. And it is a work to be done to collect all the citizen science names. We are working on an event after the summer to carry out uh, this work. But whatever their names, all these practices have something in common. A shared research question, taking a common societal challenge, a shared methodology of data collection and analysis, a shared production of new research outputs. Where shared means built together. They check each party reach an agreement on how they will work together to carry out the common research. But above all, citizen science is also about the researcher's position. It is indeed fundamental working together while respecting each other's epistemic culture, as to say, the way the different groups build a solid and shareable knowledge. So an inclusive and still very open way to define citizen science was put by Frédéric Jankowski and Joël Lemarek. We will have citizen science when there is the conscious acknowledgement of non-academic knowledge. So the very collaboratory framework will bridge communities and tools. The different communities will feed each other thanks to a common space, supporting and facilitating the starting of new projects where they will find the possibility to find each other, to work together with tools fitted to collaboration, and they will be accompanied towards open tools selection, thanks to paths and recommendation to do the better choices, and they will find the funding opportunities targeted to social sciences and the humanities. But bringing in the digital space is not enough to carry out citizen science research. This is true for the natural sciences and also for the social sciences and the humanities. So we will need a strong connection with physical spaces and with very local and linguistic communities. And this is where the collaboration with libraries, as well as with science shops, takes a great relevance. Because as we have seen with hypothesis.org, and as librarians know very well, you will tell me during the, the, the conversation, it's, it's never only about bringing people to use services, but through these services, it is about enhancing good research practices, innovating collaboration and opening the mind to new frontiers. So the invitation is to build together a sustainable environment with fluid transition between the digital and the physical spaces. 
So in conclusion, there are so many citizen science practices within the SSH out there. We need all together to highlight them, we need to support them, and we need a common effort to build sustainable environments for citizen science practices in the SSH. I hope not to have been too quick, but in any case, we will have time to discuss and come back to some of the proposition later. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Elisa, for a very interesting presentation. Uh, too quick is never a problem because we have a discussion session going on. Uh, Thomas, I see you're already taking control. Please do, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, please acknowledge that you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you and we can see the presentation. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the Libra Citizen Science uh, Working Group, where also my good colleagues uh, Tiberius and, and Katrina, who will present later, is present. Um, we did a collaboration with the Shock Project in November 2020, and some of the discussions that came out of that, and while we are at a Libra uh, Library Conference, um, one of the things, uh, the aha moments, I think, from that workshop was that libraries, research libraries, and even public libraries can play a critical part in facilitate citizen science, also with uh, the acknowledgement that perhaps the vast majority is within natural science. So how do you uh, nurse and foster that new areas of citizen science can approach and libraries can definitely play a role in that by offer tools and infrastructure and after my brief presentation, uh, my good colleague, Anna Katrine, will drive into a little bit more what we do at SDU, where we have some concrete examples. The Libra Citizen Science uh, Working Group has been going on for one and a half years now. And it's only to offer a brief glimpse into what we are doing. Uh, we share knowledge, but from the outset, we had the commitment to each other that we wanted to produce tools, digitally or otherwise, that could enable other research libraries, perhaps universities and researchers to do citizen science. And um, the Libra Open Science uh, Roadmap from 2018 makes a set of four strong recommendations. And accordingly, what we are doing in our working group is that we are coordinating through Vaso, who is also present here, which projects within citizen science, or open science would be relevant for research libraries in order to create new partnerships. And partnerships, as you can see, is also a very strong focus because we think in the Libra Citizen Science Working Group that while libraries have a lot of competencies, knowledge and infrastructure already, it's absolutely critical that we partner up with relevant researchers, universities, NGOs, uh, because libraries can play a role in this, but citizen science in itself should not be seen as a library project. What we also try to do in the Libra Citizen Science Working Group is uh, do uh, staff development and advocacy. And the last two, uh, five and six, I would like to spend just a little bit of time with, because uh, as you might be aware, and what also came up in the shock workshop in November, uh, within citizen science, there's a lot of talk about hubs or single point of contacts or even bespokes, a broad spectrum uh, contact point for citizen science. Uh, while many of us also at STU follow that model, what we do in the working group is trying to build a number of digital templates to be shared for everybody in order to get started or maybe supplement the work that the universities or libraries are doing already. And what we're also doing, uh, which is edited by our good colleague, Simon Worthington, is that we are doing a research librarian's guide to citizen science. So we found out by reaching out uh, to, the last, to the vast LIBA and citizen science community, there is a strong feeling that libraries can coordinate knowledge that can enhance citizen science. And the thesis is, that if we spread these tools and share good practices, citizen science will probably spread from the environment it has right now within natural science primarily to other fields of research. So what we try in the citizen science working group 
is not as a library project, but reaching out to the citizen science community and research libraries at large is to provide a guide built on the very uh, good size data model for public libraries, for skills, infrastructures, good open science practices, and guidelines on how to involve your library. So uh, after that, uh, I was thinking, what could be a goal uh, for a library person like me in this? And I will say libraries can help advance uh, social science and humanities by showing onboarding in practice and by discovering relevant competences and services within libraries. I'm looking forward to the discussion uh, and workshop later on. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, and Catherine, I believe you are next in line to present uh, your views on, uh, on onboarding citizen science barriers and accelerators. Yes, we can see your presentation now. Perfect. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Anne Katrine, and I'm from the Faculty of Health Sciences at uh, SDU. And I will dive into the citizen science work at our university. I have been working together with uh, Thomas Koster from our university library for almost five years. And our mission has been to establish citizen science at SDU. Our aim is to uh, bring research closer to society and citizens closer to researchers. We began our journey with an uh, uh, SDU citizen science network. And in the beginning of this year, the network tra transformed into a citizen science knowledge center with a steering committee consisting of deans, department chairs uh, from the five faculties, the head of the university library, and our pro-rector. Um, the knowledge center is based in uh, our library. As I mentioned earlier, I'm from the faculty of health sciences and at the faculty, we know about research and education. Uh, but for doing citizen science, we need additional competences and, and, and skills. And for us, our library is an ideal partner for citizen science. Our knowledge center is run by a few seed money from the faculties and from the library. And the library play an important role as a facilitator and a bridge between citizens and science, as well as a collaborator for the researchers, of course. Well, I'll just, yeah, it was here. Uh, we do believe in the power of many. So our Citizen Science Center is a partnership between the library and the faculties workers, as I seen here in the, in the middle, bridging media citizens and NGOs with researchers to engage and empower citizens to influence policy and to help the researchers to gain better data and maybe even to ask more relevant research questions through dialogue with the citizens. Uh, Thomas and I use uh, two models to explain our take on citizen science. This model is by uh, Muki Hackley from uh, UCL, and it shows different levels of uh, participation in citizen science. Um, from uh, citizens as centers to extreme citizen science, which is understood as an true and equal collaboration between citizens and researchers on a concrete research project. And it should be said that for us, there's no level better than the other. It all depends on the project and the researchers. The other model is by uh, Golombic. And uh, this model shows three fundamental elements uh, of citizen science, inclusion, contribution, and reciprocality. And sure, in inclusion and contribution is extremely important, but we believe that it is in reciprocality that you can strike gold, because it is in dialogue that both citizens and uh, researchers can gain new insights and knowledge. Our citizen science project don't just fit one concept. It uh, depends on the specific project 
uh, but we always try to focus on interaction, dialogue and feedback. In Denmark, citizen science is often used for data collection and mapping of wildlife, but at SDU, we see citizen science um, as more than that. We see citizen science as a method for interaction and for dialogue between citizens and researchers, thereby reducing the distance between them to enhance debate based on the knowledge and facts instead of fake news and personal opinions. Citizen science is also a way, a way to work with change of behavior and culture. And when we're working with the SDG girls, we see citizen science as a powerful tool. I will briefly mention three concrete citizen science projects at the SDU, all three with a link to the SDGs. The first is within humanities. And in this project, the Citizen Science Center worked together with a professor in the humanities who wanted to engage local families to explore what it takes for an ordinary Danish family to change their everyday food into more sustainable foods. This uh, citizen science project was a collaboration with the biggest Danish TV broadcaster. And uh, the project had a reach for over half a million citizens. And uh, in Denmark, that's, that's quite many because we are uh, almost 6 million people in, the, in, the, in, in Denmark. So half a million, that's, that's a lot. The second uh, project is within social science. And uh, this project will start uh, this summer and uh, we're together with the uh, children from elementary school and their families, both their parent and their grandparent, explore how citizens perceive new insect friendly areas and discuss if they are willing to change their own private garden into to enhance biodiversity in their own garden. The Citizen Science Center will help fa facilitating the dialogue with the citizens and take care of the communication. The third uh, project is a collaboration. Oh, sorry. Is a collaboration between humanities and health sciences. In Denmark, men at the age of retirement often get lonely or feel they lose their identity, which for most people are connected to their professional careers. And because mental and physical health uh, is connected, this can be a problem. An idea was uh, that uh, reading in groups and discussing relevant literature um, could benefit their self-esteem and their well-being. So the Citizen Science Center worked together with the researchers in a successful pilot uh, where we managed to engage men from different uh, um, groups of society through a collaboration with a local TV broadcaster. And after the pilot and uh, with the interesting findings from the pilot, the researchers got the needed external funding to continue this, uh, this project. So, uh, at the work workshop uh, later this afternoon, I hope we can discuss some concrete ideas for citizen science at your libraries and uh, how to start a collaboration between the library and the researchers. Thank you. Thank you very much, and Catherine. Very interesting, and I have to admit, a very beautiful presentation, just exactly what we needed right now in the middle of this day. Um, I think the next one is going to be just as beautiful in a very different way. Uh, Tiberius, the floor is all yours. We can see the presentation. We cannot hear you just yet. Do you see my slides? Yes, we can see your slides and hear you. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone once again, and thank you for being here. Uh, so we will speak about uh, a prototype bespoke that my, some of you might have heard about and um, EOSC. Let me see if the slides are moving. Okay. So what inspired us um, is for 
creating a prototype for a single point of contact for citizen science. It is a um, letter paper from 2016, uh, five years now uh, over this paper. And this paper recommends um, to universities to consider creating a single point of contact for citizen science, to advise scientists and to support them if they wish to start uh, such projects in this, uh, in this approach. I think this, uh, this paper is very easily to be found. And um, I, I, I didn't include for the moment a link, but it will be all available to you. But if, if you simple search for it, you, you will find it, the Lero advice paper. So, okay. Bespoke prototype, and this is the, um, the acronym for um, broad engagement in science, point of contact. Uh, I remind you, this is a prototype, it's not a proof of concept, it's not an MVP, and of course, it's not anything like alpha or beta version of a service or a product. Uh, this prototype is free, of course, it is part of also of um, our working group at Liber Citizen Science Working Group, and it's just there to take further the recommendation to put it in the prototype and to make it available to you, of course, it could be altered depending, depending on your needs to jumpstart, to kick off in uh, creating such single point of contacts where they are, they are needed. And this is how the prototype is designed. It has been presented extensively last year to the Liber conference and in a number of other uh, conferences. What is, um, because the time is, is not playing in our favor, what is important to be said quickly, that it's a system of portals, frameworks, uh, constantly up updated um, collections and reports and different connectors with the goal in mind of creating a physical, a hybrid or a digital desk for supporting citizen science activities in your organization from um, recruitment of citizens, assessment of the, the work, everything like this. And the ultimate goal is to build a community of curious minds. This is the most important. This community to work together with your institution to explore the uh, frontiers of, of knowledge. So it's about thinking differently than ivory tower. It's about thinking with humbleness that we need more resources that uh, the capacity of funder is, and uh, we need a, a different scalability, we, different, we need a different geographic penetration. We need fresh ideas that might uh, come not from researcher side, and this is the ultimate goal of uh, such point of uh, single uh, point of contact. This is a project um, I working as a citizen science project, um, I would say medium to large project, and it's investigating how much are we tracked by default online. So it, it deals with internet trackers, persuasion technologies, it, it deals with dark patterns in an internet and uh, in application, internet, internet based, web based applications. It's, it's easy to recognize that we, although we are a team of 11 institutions spread across Europe, the project is led by Coventry University. It's easy to understand that we don't have the scale and neither the, present, the geographical penetration to understand these trackers. So we need to work, is, for us it's, it's mandatory to work with citizen scientists to explore thousands of pages, internet pages and applications, not only to explore, but to explore those that, um, that are most used by different walks of lives and to look at these trackers and persuasive technologies. Leaving it complete in the hand of citizens is, is not working because we need a scientific rigor. We need a protocol, for example, to collect the data. We need uh, different ways to analyze and pro process this data. Leaving it in the hands of researchers al alone is also not an option because we don't have the scalability, the geographic penetration. 
we need to access some of these websites from different regions of the world because they look differently. So we don't have a bespoke, neither of these institutions don't have a bespoke. What we miss, we miss, for example, templates of uh, such data protocols. We, um, we missed, for example, different strategies for engaging with uh, citizen scientists and for recruiting them. We had, we had to build them from the scratch. Many other things. We miss hardly, ha heavily miss a connector with the legal department and safety department to understand what are the legal implications. We are operating with sensitive data and also we are building up sensitive opinions. We don't have that either. So we miss quite hard a bespoke. Fast forward, EOSC and the marketplace. This is a great idea of EOSC. We wish this could be, this process of building the marketplace could speed up. And as you see on the, uh, uh, on the graphic with bars, we also hope that this marketplace is attracting more attention and is giving more resources as well to social science and humanities. This is an important areas of, uh, area of research. As we all know, research is dealing with two areas, natural sciences and society. So this part of society um, deserves a greater uh, attention. It's not necessarily something that stays only on EOSC side, it stays also on our side, and I, I prefer to speak about that. Uh, we need, for example, to advance quickly bespoke, bespoke services, bespoke-like services into the marketplace. And this is not only about SKS, it's about our community, the, the whole community. And uh, also these collections of protocols and these connectors, they could also be spread and put it in, the, in this marketplace. Uh, finally, not to... For to forget something very important about citizen science. Citizen science is indeed about enhancing scientific research, but equally important is about addressing, addressing societal needs. And again, we should act in, with humbleness, researchers and research administrators and research supportive organizations, at least from one perspective to be humble that we cannot identify alone the societal needs. Second uh, and third, it's also important the educational and networking part. part. Um, we not only need to build education for uh, citizens to be able to join with different skills uh, our teams, but we also need to, to build education for researchers. So it's both ways. Researchers should employ uh, with highest um, respect ethics in research and um, also sh should learn to, to speak in the lay language. These are just two uh, very uh, simple and naive examples about uh, how this education part should work. So finally, uh, Bespoke is about driving research beyond uh, the uh, academic walls and practices. It's about nurturing a community of curious minds. It's about consolidating trust uh, from society to research and from research to society. It's about building the necessary, uh, the ne the necessary context to help, for example, uh, pub the public to, make, uh, to see the, the difference between evidence and misinformation. This is, part, this is one role of universities. Between sustainable development and manipulation, which is quite an uh, actual topic, and it's about research, not only about scientists to become researchers, but also researchers to become better scientists. Contact details, if needed, I encourage all questions and inquiries, and I, I hope um, this will also give us some food for um, uh, thoughts and for the next conversation. Thank you very much, Xavier. Indeed, please uh, reach out for questions. And if you have any questions right now, please post them in the chat. Uh, we're always uh, happy to address them after the next two presentations. Up next is Elena, um, representing Inas and the University of Bordeaux. Uh, if you are ready, you can share your screen now. Can you see my screen? Yeah? Not yet. 
It's okay? No? No, not yet. But we're happy to wait. <laughs> it uh, always happens. Something must go wrong, right? We're happy that this is the little glitch that we're having today. Nothing more serious. Every session has a little bit of something. Maybe I have to try again? Please do. Sorry. No worries. Yes, we can see your presentation now. If you make it full screen, fantastic. Okay. Go ahead. Um, my name is Hélène Schwalm. I'm in charge with project at the University of Bordeaux and uh, more especially at the Innovation Opportunities Department. Uh, I'm currently working on open innovation activities in the framework on, on of an Erasmus Plus project called uh, INOS, uh, which aims to optimize um, the pedagogical and the social impact uh, of open and citizen science. Um, I'm here to share with you the way we are currently experimenting open science and citizen science within the INOS project at my university and give you, I assume, a different perspective on the topic, uh, or let's say a step sideways due to my position. So uh, first of all, just a few words on the context. Um, the University of Bordeaux is a large multi multidisciplinary university. Uh, we are talking about 56,000 students, 6,000 administrative and many laboratories uh, in science, technology, uh, social and human sciences. Um, 2021 is an important year for us because uh, it's a year of transition. Uh, environmental and societal transition with some important projects, uh, including a roadmap which mentions the importance of participatory science, as we used to call it in France, and uh, implies um, a challenge-based way, uh, let's say an interdisciplinary way, to think about project management, management and teaching as well. Uh, a roadmap on open science had just been drawn up, and uh, it's uh, is operan operationali no, oh, sorry, operationalizing by the library department. Um, since 2021, uh, our university is engaged in a global and participative reflection with its communities um, to open up itself to the society and to develop open science. Um, notably, and it's very important, by creating the conditions of the emergence of citizen science projects. So I'll give you here some of the ideas with emerged during the workshops. Uh, in Copenhagen, the scientific med mediation by modernizing, modernizing it. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, capitalizing on scientists who are already uh, on the cutting edge on digital med mediation. Uh, create some intermediate spaces. Uh, we used to call it in France tiers lieu, but uh, libraries can have this kind of roles. Uh, and uh, it, it was said before to capitalize, to capitalize on the citizens' needs and uh, another important idea to acculturate uh, to participation uh, with the idea, for instance, to uh, participative budgets or this kind of initiatives. Um, as an interface between many communities, um, my department, the Innovation Opportunities Department, was created in 2019 um, to design new programs that are relevant for the innovation ecosystem and pilot them with the academic staff, students, administrative, and partners. Um, for us, it's, it implies breaking down, breaking down um, the university silos uh, by connecting communities. Um, it, the, the department is positioned at the earth of a large ecosystem, uh, and its role is notably to experiment with new formats, uh, open innovation, and to acculturate the university communities on one end and the external communities on the other end to open and city, citizen science, which is really an important step. Um, in this context, uh, the Innovation uh, Opportunities uh, Department is member for the University of Bordeaux of the Consortium, uh, mentioned before, and untitled INOS. Um, as a community of practices, uh, the projects aim to impulse and optimize open and citizen science. Um, to echo to this project's approach and to disseminate the results within the institution, uh, we created an internal working group last year. Uh, four innovative projects for the institution were run during the year 2020 and 2021. 
and uh, benefited from support coming either from the results of the project itself, uh, some tools and um, uh, tips to implement and evaluate activities. Uh, a guide of best practices uh, is coming uh, very soon. And uh, from the experience of the department in engagement, uh, let's say that with communication tools, network inside and outside the university. So each of these four projects has a capital gain in community building, uh, pedagogical innovation, and challenge-based challenge learning activities for open innovation activities. Uh, there, um, there's good practices in mentoring as well, or in modern, modernization of the uh, mediation of science. And um, I can mention an, as an example, the SPINE project, uh, which is a participatory platform for the analysis of uh, bio, bio, biomedical images to advance research around uh, multiple sclerosis. And uh, as an experimentation, uh, the project was evaluated and the project managers captured the best practices in order to disseminate them. Uh, and to echo to your activities and to finish, I would like uh, to talk uh, about uh, a collaboration between my department and the library department and accompanied by INOS. Uh, the Editaton, or my thesis in Wikipedia, uh, was a multidisciplinary project of collaboration between PhD students and civic society. Um, according to the librarian in charge of the project, uh, Wikipedia implies production of sources information, training in uh, uh, scientific integrity, um, and uh, it's important, a new position of the university role. Uh, the, the, the experimentation was really an occasion uh, to evaluate the potential of impacts um, of such an activity and to challenge it, notably the way to engage scientists on one hand or citizens on another hand. And uh, today I can say uh, with this experimentation that um, uh, with this collaboration, our library department has clearly an, an expertise uh, on open science and citizen activity. Uh, it designed some innovative concepts uh, with a responsible approach of uh, data management, um, a really new and modern way to think about mediation and uh, an updated and it's important overview of the science and the research in our university. And uh, with our initiative, with the internal working group, um, despite some practical tools such as communication, evaluation, uh, the Innovation Opportunities Department offer a scaling support uh, to capitalize on the achieve achievements. So uh, to conclude, um, I would say that as a catalyst, the keyword is to act as a community builder uh, by extending the network to lend, uh, that's uh, our expression, uh, to lend experimental projects and enrich the expertise of uh, librarians by new formats and toolboxes. And uh, finally, that was my first idea to acculturate um, the communities to new paradigms, uh, which are putting the university at the, at the heart of the societal challenges. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Helena. Um, we're running a little late, so I'm just going to, without further ado, give the floor to Angela for her final uh, presentation to round up our all of our presentations today. Yes, we can see your presentation okay, now. Great. And can you. you hear me well? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so my name is Angela Justamante. Uh, I work at Cosworth Cloud Communications, which is a Horizon 2020 project. And also I work at a CREAF Research Center at the, the Communications Department. Uh, CREAF is a research center focused on ecology and biodiversity and climate science studies. So <clears throat> what is citizen science in Cost for Cloud and what Cost for Cloud is about? So Cost for Cloud is a European project, as I said, to boost citizen science technologies. But how are we doing this? So we are co-designing and developing 11 user-centered and innovative services to increase 
increase the quantity and quality of observations. I mean, these 11 services will be integrated, uh, integrated in different citizen science apps to improve the app's performance. So, for example, uh, we one of the services is uh, one portal which integrates biodiversity and environmental observations. And uh, an expert can, can go there and can validate these observations. And also, uh, he or she can download a huge amount of data from there of biodiversity and environmental data. Also, uh, we have another service uh, which improves the artificial intelligence when rec recognizing a species or another service that shows the potential uh, species to be observed in a set area on a Euro-wide level, etc. Uh, I will give you another example later on the presentations. Uh, and OK, what are we going to do with these 11 services? So we are going to integrate them in the European Open Science Cloud and make them available there so anyone can download the services and integrate them in their own citizen science apps. Uh, in Cost for Cloud also, uh, we count with the participation of nice citizen science platforms and do-it-yourself initiatives. And, and their role will be to test and integrate these services. And why we are, are we doing this? Because we want to contribute to ensuring the sustainability of the citizen observatories and citizen science platforms. And also we want to increase uh, the data quality and uh, the data quantity uh, that different citizen science projects uh, receive. So uh, when, when developing these services, um, it is, we think it's essential to ask to the end users, which are in this case, the citizen science community, is the citizen science tool I am developing easy to use? Does it meet the needs of my end users? How could I improve it? So to answer this question, um, we are organizing a, a series of co-design sessions uh, with the main end users, which, as I said, is the citizen science community, uh, for example, if the staff of citizen science projects, the citizen scientists, app developers, and anyone passionate about nature, technology, and citizen science. And uh, how we, are we engaging all these end users uh, to the, uh, the co-designing sessions and also the testing sessions of the services? So well, for each service, which are 11, we are uh, identifying the end users because they are, may are different. Also, we are sending personal invitations, collabor collaborating with different organizations and associations related to citizen science. So we are designing a billy infographic to, to explain the service because if people doesn't understand, don't understand the service, they can they don't know how to use it and, and why it has these benefits to them. And also we have opened a telegram channel to promote the Cosmo Clouds activities and, and also encourage the participants to join more activities. Uh, of course, promoting uh, the events on our social media and sending, sending all, sending them an, an email with all this information of explaining how are we using all the their feedback and all the valuable information that they have shared with us. Uh, <clears throat> Also, we are organizing some testing activities, such as BioBlitz. Uh, for example, the last that we organized is called BioMarato, which uh, aims to collect biodiversity observations uh, in Catalonia. We also are, uh, will organize hackathons, datathons, uh, and all these activities will help us to test these services in different citizen science apps. 
And I, I, I wanted also to give you a more uh, concrete example, because sometimes we, when we are speaking about services, it's something like it's a bit abstract. So I want to give you uh, this example, which is one of the services, which is called FastCAD Cloud, um, which allows to upload and analyze all the nature videos and pictures to the FastCAD Cloud website and get back only information on relevant images and recordings of wildlife activity and quickly identify the species names thanks to artificial intelligence. This website service will eventually also connect with the biodiversity citizen observatories. So if you are a citizen scientist using a camera trap, you will be able to easily upload uh, the pictures uh, the wildlife pictures to some platforms such as uh, iSpot, our portal, and or Natusfera. <clears throat> and also, this is my, my personal opinion. <laughs> uh, what is my future perfect for citizen science engagement? Because I, as I am working as a, a communicator and then and also in the engagement field. So for me, it's really, really important to create user-friendly citizen science app and also try to avoid linguistic barriers by creating a citizen science app in, in diverse languages. Also, including the project uh, budget, um, a, a budget to hire a, a person who works in the communication and the engagement field, I think it's really important to, to give feedback to the participants, to explain them why is it important to participate in citizen science project. Also, I think it's quite relevant to increase the observations credibility so that the academic and political and social, social fields trust to use citizen science data, because I think this is another barrier right now. Also, tools also create tools to recognize citizen science's contribution to research. For example, it would be really great to have a service notification informing the participants that her or his observation has been included in some papers. So I think this is also a, a nice way to, to acknowledge them for their participants and say, okay, what you are doing is also important. Also, uh, of course, <laughs> increase the funding to increase citizen science projects sustainability because sometimes it's like, like, okay, you have three years <laughs> for the project, but um, in three years, you, also, you already have the community, the community is already using this app, you have the social media, and after three years, you say, okay, bye bye. <laughs> the social media stop, you don't give feedback, and you stop giving feedback. And I think this is also a problem. Of course, joint efforts uh, among various a citizen science project, which is something that from Cost for Cloud we are trying to do. And here, uh, more focus on the research libraries. I think it would be really great to organize joint activities, for example, talks, workshops, um, be able to use their infrastructures to organize different activities with them. So I think this is nice and, and we can discuss it further later on. And I also would like to invite you to join our community. Uh, you can fill up this form and also join our Telegram channel uh, or visit our website because we can, I think you also could contribute uh, to, to Cost for Cloud project. And thank you very much. I also invite you, uh, of course, to follow Cost for Cloud on social media and visit our website. And if you have any questions, you can contact me or you can contact the coordination team. And we will be, and it will be great to, to speak with you. Thank you very much, Angela. Uh, uh, it's for those of you who haven't managed to get their phone and get the get the QR code scanned, don't worry. We'll have all the presentations uh, for you. Uh, when the session is over, you'll have access to the Mozinodo. So rest assured, you'll have all of the information uh, available at your fingertip. Thank you, all of our six speakers, for these wonderful presentations. Very inspiring and very thought-provoking as well. I think uh, I saw a couple of you nodding uh, during each other's presentations, like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Oh, yeah, this we also forgot to mention. That's a good sign. It's good to be on the same page. And to continue in that uh, spirit, I would like to give the floor to Marie uh, Willems, uh, our 
co-moderator for today, to introduce the Jamboards, which we will be using for a further discussion. For the discussion, I would like to ask you if you're comfortable with it and if you're willing to turn on your camera so we know who we're talking to. It's a little bit, it brings us this much closer to the face-to-face -face event and face-to-face -face discussions. That's the only thing we can do these days. Uh, and please don't be shy, turn on your microphone. Any idea is a great idea for us because it's gonna be a brainstorming session. Monique will guide you through this and anyone else who wants to jump in at any point, please do.